We're going to get straight into things. Um, we're going to talk about, as, as the name of the panel suggests, we're going to talk about investment and what's ahead for the Indonesian economy. But before we do, can we just quickly address where the economy's been in the last few months? And, and that's basically been um, at the centre of an emerging market route. And Park Mirza, that's seen the currency down some 11% on the year. Um, where's it got to go next? Is there more pain to come? And what's your outlook for the Indonesian economy? It's interesting questions. Okay, I think, uh, please don't forget that we have been in this volatility for five years. Yeah? Uh, since 19... Since 2013, right? That's when Bernanke made statement about temper tantrum. And you remember that for emerging countries in the second semester of 2013, the, the currency volatility was high. Uh, depreciation happened not only in, in Indonesia, but also in, in other countries. So during that time, uh, Bank Indonesia had to increase the interest rate, and the government at that time had to make a budget more efficient by cutting fuel subsidies. Because at that time, our current account deficit was 4.3% of uh, GDP. And we need to contain our current account deficit because the financing of the current account deficit coming from FDI, coming from portfolio investment. So we need to show that uh, we able to contain the current account deficit. So after we increase the rate and the government uh, uh, cutting subsidies in 2013 and 2014, uh, during President Jokowi in 2014, so our current account deficit improved to 3%, 2.5%, to and then uh, last year our current account deficit uh, below 2%. Yeah, so the the currency volatility, not only this year, maybe you forgot, 2013, 2015, and this year. Yeah, so we have been in this environment, not only Indonesia, but uh, all the emerging countries, uh, already have been five years. But you look, Indonesia economic growth, the lowest during this volatility was in 2015, 4.8%. 4.8% is not low, you know. 4.8% is a high. And uh, before the temper tantrum, our, our economic growth was around 6.3%. But at that time, uh, commodity price, CPO price, uh, coal price, rubber price was very high because of China economic growth, 12%. But because commodity price collapsed, uh, China economic growth from 12% now is only around 6.5, 6.8%. Our economic growth, 5.1, 5.2% is good economic growth. It's, it's comparing comparing to, to, to other countries. So, you know, uh, we have been able to, to manage the current volatility five years. Yeah, with the economic growth around 5%, 5.2%. I think it's quite good. If I, if I may, Pak, though, that, that 5%, although, as you point out, very good, and, and many economies would envy that, it's not the 7% that um, the President Joko Widodo had targeted. It's well short. Will Indonesia, can Indonesia ever get back to 6% growth? Or are, is that in, in the too hard basket, as they say? I think we have to be able to to go through this volatility uh, until it finishes. I mean, uh, it hasn't not finished, yeah, uh, because the cycle for US interest rate uh, is not finished, yeah. From, you know, it was uh, in, before 2008, was 5.25% for US interest rate. During crisis, US crisis went down to 0.25. Now it's a normalization period from 0 0.25, now it's 2.25. Uh, it's not finished. Maybe it will go to 3%, 3.25%, maybe it will go to 3.5%. So uh, until we pass that period, 
Yeah, so by after 2019, when the US interest rate already reached its peak and then it will go down, it is very possible for Indonesia to achieve again above 6%. Okay. Yeah, but during this, this period, I think it's, uh, stability is, is, is very important. Uh, Nani, um, of course, the, the, the currency woes are not just a macroeconomic issue for Bank Indonesia, it's an issue for companies like the Bluebird Group, you import capital goods, you spare parts, oil prices are a, a factor. So what is the impact on, on your company and, and how are you responding to this current situation? Yeah, I, I think as mentioned by Pamirsa as well, this volatility has been around in Indonesia for quite some time. And we have been part of the demo, uh, domestic economic growth for the last 46 years. So we had been through those volatility times as well. So what is very important for us is that uh, we sometimes we cannot really anticipate what's going to come. And the worst thing is this crisis comes as a perfect storm, right? So, uh, but what is most important for us is that the trust, we still have the trust that Indonesia have a very good potential. And whether it's the resources, whether it's the human resources. So, and uh, I think what the government has been doing, the past five, past five years to just manage the spikes, I think uh, is, is pretty, pretty well done. Now on our side, uh, this volatility of course uh, affected our business as, as you mentioned. One of it is because we rely a lot on import for our cars. Then when the, the rate increased, then our car price also increased and the spare parts as well. Uh, the oil price, because the oil price is uh, increasing, that would affect us as well. But uh, what is also very important here is that uh, if the government can manage the cost, because at the end of the day, as businesses, we are not foundation, right? So we need to sustain our business through pro the good uh, profitability. So it is very important for us that, yes, there are some things that cannot be avoided. Hence, the government need to do something about it. But it is also important that the government try to look at other things that can help businesses to still sustain the crisis. For example, cutting off other tariff or licenses or anything that could help the, the business to grow. Because if the interest rate keep increasing, then I think the domestic economy may slow down as well because people um, don't have enough uh, capacity to get uh, loan with higher interest rates, for example. So I think it is very important to, to manage it. If it's necessary, then it has to be done. We will go through it and we'll adjust ourselves as we always have been. Yeah. That might be a, a good time to take an audience poll, um, our first poll, uh, which is about the rupiah. And Pak Mizra, as that's coming up, there we can see it on the screen over there, but as that's coming up, uh, Ibn Onim mentioned interest rate rises. There's been five so far aimed at stabilising the rupiah, uh, one of 50 basis points. What's next? Is are more interest rate hikes from Bank Indonesia on the way? Are they inevitable? You know, in, in, the, in the last five years, uh, you know, when, when uh, US start to increase interest rate, uh, reduce the the stimulus of the monetary, uh, you know, U.S. interest rate increased from 0 0.25, now already 2.25. And Bank Indonesia interest rate cycle, uh, we increased interest rate uh, 200 basis point in 2013, 2014. And then during the relatively stable period, 2016, 2017, we able to cut interest rate by another 200 basis point. Uh, but because the US hasn't stopped raising the rate and our neighbor also started to raise the rate, uh, and we also have to contain the, the deficit of export import uh, goods and services or deficit of current account, so we have to start to increase interest rate again. Yeah. So we already increased 150 basis point. Uh, what next? Uh, I think. Uh, you have to understand that uh, we are financing the current account deficit coming from FDI, coming from portfolio, and the portfolio investor always comparing Indonesia with other country. 
comparing Indonesia with India, comparing Indonesia with Philippines, comparing Indonesia with Mexico, Poland, and so on. So, so it is very important for uh, Indonesia to show to our creditors, portfolio managers basically is our creditor. So to, to our creditors that Indonesia manage the economy prudent, Indonesia uh, want to contain the current account deficit to maximum uh, 3% GDP. Indonesia uh, doing the structural reform. Yeah, Pak Tom uh, pushing for the regulation on the on the investment side. Uh, Pak Darmin pushing the regulation on the real sector. Uh, and the Minister of Finance uh, uh, managed the budget deficit uh, uh, 2.1%, 2.2% this year, and next year only 1.9%, 1.8% GDP. Uh, so we have to sh able to show to our creditors that we manage the, this, this country uh, prudently uh, in order for the portfolio investor keep coming to Indonesia, mm. because that's very important. So, so if your question is, is Indonesia interest rate is going to increase? Yeah, I just say that US co will continue to increase from 2.25 to 3% to 3.25 uh, next year, and our neighbor will continue to increase interest rate. So Indonesia will continue to be uh, ahead of the curve. <laughs> and that's, that, that's a phrase we've heard so often from the central bank. I, I'm not sure if the poll results are up. Um, if we have some results from that poll, we do. Uh, they say the, the, the clear message is the worst is yet to come for the rupiah. What's your view of that? Still worth more pain to come, or are we through the worst? It's 63 percent, 64 percent almost, really, from the from the audience here. I don't understand why a reporter like you always asking about <laughs> exchange rate level, and for central bank. Uh, most important is stability. Yeah, if the corporate sectors uh, can still able to uh, do their business, if the confidence of the depositor is still intact, uh, if the banking sector can go normal, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, don't don't look at the exchange rate level. We don't have target on the exchange rate level. What we, what is very important, I think, for you all, the real sectors, that the business can go normal. Of course, this is not a normal period before, just like before 2013. It is not a normal period, but we able to go through this volatility in the last five years. So far, so good. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Parker, and I'm you have to say Alhamdulillah. <laughs> this is not easy period. This is not easy period. Turkey failed, Venezuela failed, Argentina failed. We have to show to our creditors that financing this economy, that we able to manage this economy prudent. Uh, Park, I'm conscious of the time because I know you're a very busy man today. I, I just want to get to an issue that Something that happened last night, um, and Ibunani, so we saw last night that there was an announcement from a government ministry, a plan to raise the petrol price um, by about 7%. And we heard Pak Tom mention earlier the need for reform. Is it now the time to reform um, the subsidy uh, landscape and, and petrol prices in Indonesia, Ibunani? What, what do you say to that? And, and of course, I should point out there was that announcement to raise it by seven percent. Within an hour, that was retracted, and 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 so we're still trying to figure out why, Pak Tom. But um, Ibunani, what's your view of that? Well, luckily for me, I was not part of the conversation <laughs> then. <laughs> and but um, it is a very volatile time at this moment to make that decision, either yes or no because the, the increase of fuel, especially premium, will definitely affect a lot of businesses and may affect inflation. But does it, is it necessary? I personally think that it is necessary, but maybe it's about the timing. Um, so I don't know about the policy, but uh, as I mentioned, there will be impact for every decision. So once the decision is made, and as long as the government can 
see it as a bigger picture, as I mentioned again uh, in the earlier uh, state, that it, what is important for us is the sustainability of the company. So if we, if, if we get a, a higher cost on this side and if we can get a lower cost on the other side, then the business will survive. So that is where uh, I need, uh, or we as a business people need the government to understand also from our point of view, while we are also just adjusting to all the policies that are needed, which is made by the government. Because business people cannot say, we know better than the government what to do. I mean, that's the last thing, because we're just different. Um, so being around Indonesia for more than 46 years as a business, I think we're very used to adjust and adapt. Uh, but again, please do remember that we need to survive. You know, that's the only thing we need the government to understand. And, and Pak Mizu does have to, to jet off, and we'll keep you on stage for a little while, um, Ibunani. Just very quickly, impact on inflation if the price, if petrol was to, to be, the price was to be um, boosted, would it be a bad impact for inflation? Because, it, well, it would impact inflation, we know that, which is quite low in Indonesia, below 3% at the moment. What's your view, very quickly, Pak Mizu? Uh, Indonesia inflation now is about. Uh 3.4, yeah, maximum 3.5%. I think year on year is still running around 3.2, yeah. Uh, by the end of the year, it's maybe around 3.4, 2.5%. Uh, and this is, uh, I think in the last three years, our inflation has been uh, below 4%, yeah, around 3 to 3.5%. So it's this, uh, in line with uh, central bank uh, target, okay. Uh, but you know, uh, there is a misallocation of resources in the economy, and we have to deal with that. Yeah? Uh, uh, you know that uh, if again, if you look at our deficit of export import goods and services, or current account deficit, uh, there is acceleration of import. Yeah? Acceleration of import, we can say uh, first is coming from. Uh, from infrastructure related, yeah, import, which is, uh, in my definition, is this is actually is a healthy import growth because it is for infrastructure, whether it is important for Indonesia economic long term uh, growth, uh, the availability of infrastructure all over Indonesia. Uh, but if possible, maybe some of the projects that not yet. Uh, close the financial uh, signing and so on, uh, that maybe we can uh, reschedule some of the, the, the big projects. Uh, second uh, is about the, the fuel import. Yeah? Mm. The fuel import, uh, because the, the oil price continue going up, so the fuel import uh, uh, value is increasing, so our that will make our uh, trade balance deficit uh, wider. Yeah, and you know the, there is a difference between retail price and the international price, and that's we call it a misallocation of, of resources. So we have to deal with this. We have to deal with this. Uh, but the timing is, I think, it, it will uh, up to the governments. But I would say that uh, the from our calculations, you know, if you uh, increase uh, just like announced uh, last night. The, the impact is uh, what was announced last night. Sorry. Uh, what was announced last night? Seven percent, almost seven percent price rise in. Oh, five hundred rupiah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's the impact is uh, less than fifty basis point to inflation. So if our inflation three point four or currently actually running at 3.2, 3.3, so maybe only to 3.8, which is okay. Yeah, and, uh, and our interest rate, policy rate now is already 5.75. Yeah, uh, we, we don't need to make a response to if the increase inflation only 0.5%, but we have to make response when the Fed and our neighbor continue to increase the rate, yeah, so. Don't be mistaken about that. Okay. Now, now Pak, I, I realise you need to get off the stage <laughs> yes. and use some of that cheap Indonesian petrol to get to another event. Um, so thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Dennis. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, big money in people.
Giovanni is going to stay with me just for another couple of minutes. This, this is about investment, of course. Um, how do you see the investment landscape after all of what we've just briefly talked about, the currency? Of course, um, trade is a big issue at the moment. In fact, the mantra, if you like, coming out of Bali right now is that um, it's the biggest threat to the global economy. Uh, is Indonesia, the, the landscape for investment, is it good? Do you stay on the sidelines right now? Does a company like Bluebird expand? What's your view of in the investment climate? We always ha have been a strong uh, believer that Indonesia have a very high potential. And I think that's a starting point. Uh, but in business um, life, we all know that with high potential, there comes with high risk, right? So it is very important. Uh, I think what Indonesia needs at this moment is uh, invest uh, the foreign investor to come, especially in several uh, sectors. I think uh, it was mentioned earlier by Pamirsa, the infrastructure is very important because the infrastructure will help the domestic uh, economy to grow as well. Because as we all know, one of the uh, high costs for the domestic economy growth is also the logistic costs. Um, so if we can uh, reduce the logistic costs, we can uh, improve the domestic uh, economy again in the future. So that is one part that the in, uh, foreign investor can take part. And I think that is pretty stable. Uh, the only thing that we, sh we should be aware of is the political instability, if there is any. Uh, but as, as we can see now that, um, you know, the last time we had political instability was 20 years ago, right? So I think you can see that all in all, if, if I need to weigh the, the opportunity and the risk, I think Indonesia is still the best place to invest, honestly. But it is not easy. Uh, I think all of the foreign investors also know that sometimes that you're faced with a lot of issues. We Indonesians uh, know how to go th and handle these issues. There will always be challenges around. And uh, with every challenge, there will always be a solution. And I think the best way uh, for being in this kind of situation also that we can help or take part in shaping the next, uh, the future policies of, of the government. And I think that is an important part as well. So I would say don't be discouraged because we are an Indonesian company. We've been here for 46 years. We've been through ups and downs. We've been through so many different governments. And, but the, the real resources is there. The, poten the real potential is there. Uh, another part that is very important is education. Uh, I think it is very important for Indonesia now to invest in the right kind of education, the right kind of human resources that would be ready for the future, not just for current needs, for the future needs. So that, that part, I think we can open uh, for an investor more and more as well. Yeah, it's a very good point you make. And I know the skills gap is an issue that Tom Limbong has raised before him as well. The, the figures speak for themselves. Less than 10% of Indonesia's 127 million strong uh, working population have a university degree. Um, some, uh, it's about 40% have gone to primary school or, or below primary school. So it, it's a really important point that you make. I'd like to just quickly ask you about one more thing before we have to move, move off the stage, and that's um, we're in a, also in a, t a time of great technological advancement um, that brings disruption, but it also brings opportunity. Your, your company is dealing with that. Um, Gojek, the motorcycles, they're synonymous with, with Indonesian life now. How do you deal with, um, do you embrace it or do you battle against these, these kind of intrusions? I think the question, I mean, you don't go against the advancement of technology. I mean, you know, I think that is not a question anymore nowadays. So we should embrace and use the, the advancement of technology to our own benefits. Um, in reality, uh, we need to cut costs. For example, for Bluebird, we need to be able to cut costs without really jeopardizing our quality. And one of the main tools to do that is by using the advancement of technology. Because by using the technology, we can run the company more efficiently, for example. So not only we collaborate with technology companies, but we also advancing ourselves by using technology to reduce our costs by being more efficient. So I think 
all companies really need to embrace this advancement of technology. And the advancement of technology, in reality, have helped the Indonesian economy as well through the digital um, economy. Um, a lot of um, Indonesian potential is still untapped. And before this advancement of uh, digital technology, uh, a lot of people cannot really do trading through e-commerce. And because of this, now a lot, a lot more small and medium businesses arise. And that would help with the domestic economy. And that would be our defense mechanism against this spike of the outside uh, um, policies, if I may say. Thank you so much for your time today, Vernon. Oh, thank, thank you. you very, thank you Great very much. Great to be here.